reptiles are misunderstood creatures, and with that comes a lot of myths that people believe are true, no matter how wild they are. But today, we're going over the top five wildest, most insane myths that are not true about snakes and other reptiles. My name's Adam, this is Pikachu, you're watching Wiccans Wicked Reptiles, stick around. So for this episode, we're gonna go over things that people tell me and probably tell you or maybe you believe yourself are absolutely true. They are sure that these things must be true about reptiles because they read it about the internet and you can't lie on there, right? So let's not make a big to-do about it, let's just start it off. Number five, soaking reptiles is bad or soaking reptiles is a must and all of them need baths. Neither of these things are true. Now, if you're not aware, a lot of people will soak basically everything they have because it helps shedding, hydration, whatever. Or there's the adverse camp that would say, you don't need to soak any reptiles or certain species like bearded dragons, never soak them ever, it's cruel. But neither of these things are true. There are times when you would want to soak a bearded dragon. They have femoral pores, the males do. Yeah, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong, whatever, who cares? Femoral. And sometimes if they get really clogged up, you do need to soak them to help release and unclog them. But in normal cases, there isn't too many reasons why you'd want to soak a bearded dragon. They're from kind of sort of arid parts of the world in Australia. So I wouldn't recommend giving bearded dragon baths on a weekly basis, it's unnecessary. But then there's the other camp that says, well, absolutely, you need to soak them because they hydrate through their butts. Like, no, they don't. Like. Turtles can breathe through their butts, that's a different thing. Why did I even bring that up? Why are we talking about butts so much? Like big cloacas and I cannot lie. I think what we wanna cover in this entry is, this is always right or this is always wrong is usually not the case. There's a lot of gray area. These things are living animals. Each has their own special need or set of needs. So yes, it makes sense to soak an animal like a ball python who needs high humidity anyway, if they're in shed. It's not necessary. If you have the humidity right in their enclosure, they'll be fine. But if you soak a ball python, there's no harm done. As long as the water temperature is correct, it's not too deep, the whole, you know, everything that you, it's common sense. Let's use common sense. So we'll keep this one short because like this doesn't make any sense. There's no always or never, basically ever. Except for like, don't step on animals. I would say definitely don't step on animals is uh, always for sure. Or never, never step on them. I would say not a myth though, would be like, don't let your ball python wrap itself around a chair because best of luck unwrapping it. Yes, I'm wearing pajama pants, sue me. Number four, and something I also used to believe when I was six, animals grow to the size of their enclosure. <laughs> this is so silly. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So no, if you keep a Burmese python in a 10 gallon enclosure, it's not gonna be a tiny Burmese python. It's gonna be a Burmese python with a lot of broken glass around it. I get why you'd want this to be true, but it's not. If you have a ball python, a lot of people in back in the day used to say, keep them in 20 gallon enclosures. Now we know without question, without a shadow of a doubt, that you cannot keep ball pythons in 20 gallon enclosures if you are a good person. <laughs> like if you are ethically keeping these animals, they need a bigger enclosure. They're gonna get three feet at minimum most of the time, sometimes five feet or maybe even bigger if it's female. So in my opinion, well, there's a whole care guide right here, but 120 gallons, right? Two feet by four feet by four feet. No, four feet by two feet by two feet. Math is hard. This is another one I don't need to beat with a dead horse. Animals don't grow to the size of their enclosure, although, you would be shocked. I guarantee you, if I had to guess, I, I get about 50 requests a year to take in red ear sliders. It's always red ear sliders because they're common, they're easy to find, they're cheap, they just give it away all the time. And I'm the reptile guy in my city. So people just ask me all the time to take them in. I got two requests last week. And I get this all the time when you talk to these people because I try to find them homes, it's not me. Well, they just grew to the size of their enclosure, so it's a small one, even though it's 10 years old, it's just really tiny because I kept it in a 20 gallon enclosure. How often did you feed it? Once a week. Did you give it UVB? What's that? Like, that's why it's small, because it's underfed and you it has terrible shell deformities, because it, that's why. Not because it grew to the size of its enclosure, because you didn't do one shred of research, and that's why. So, be better? Be better than that. Number three. 
Certain species do not bite. <laughs> Anything with a mouth can bite. Anything. So although there are certain species that are less likely to bite you, it doesn't mean that they're not going to. Even something like an egg-eating snake that does not have teeth can bite you. Now, it's not gonna feel like anything. Just like if my Pomeranian bites me, he doesn't have any teeth, so it, it feels hilarious. But he does bite you. If in the middle of the night you move your feet and he's sleeping at the end of the bed, he will bite the crap out of your feet. It just doesn't feel like anything. It's just gross. Gummy and moist. Ugh. Moist. So anything with a mouth can bite you. <laughs> but for sure, there are different species of animals that are less likely to bite you. I did a whole list right here about the least likely to bite or whatever I called the video. And those are the ones I'd recommend if you're someone who doesn't want to get bit by something. Or there's certain animals that if they do bite you, it doesn't really feel like anything or it hurts way less than certain animals. For example, a spotted python, which is an amazing pet, absolutely fantastic, one of the best that there are out there. If that thing bites you, it's gonna hurt a heck of a lot less than a Burmese python. Although Burmese pythons generally, if you take them out and show that you're not food, they're pretty placid and not very likely as well. But again, it's something you always be aware of. If anyone tells you, oh, ball pythons don't bite, they're full of crap. And if someone tells you that this animal doesn't bite, this species doesn't bite, do not take any other advice from them because they are so far out to lunch, they will not find their way back to the office. This is like such a, why am I ragging on people? <laughs> I guess this is the part where I should say, if uh, someone who you think knows more than you tells you this, I understand why you'd believe them, especially, it's hard for me to understand because my entire life is reptiles. Like I am the reptile guy. I am kind of shamelessly, my personality is reptile. So to me, that's all I care about. That's all I do is reptiles. So if you're someone who just passively wants a really cool pet and you watch a few videos and you know, your buddy who claims to be an expert tells you something, I get it. But with that said, if you're getting any animal, you should do enough research to know they don't grow to the size of their enclosure. <laughs> Come on. Number two, cohabbing any reptile or amphibian species is bad. It is a cardinal sin to keep animals together. Wrong. There are certain species I definitely would not recommend keeping together. King snakes, full time. Bad news. You're gonna wake up and have one less king snake and one much fatter king snake than when you went to bed. Even things like ball pythons, I would not recommend cohabbing full time, or even things that I think are okay to cohab full time, like leopard geckos. Obviously there's so much research you have to do. So do research. I did a whole video right here about cohabbing. Watch that. I'm just saying in certain instances, cohabbing things like leopard geckos is fine, right? Two females, same size, like, Anyway, watch the video first, do research. But if you cohab two males together, you will be getting one of the males off the side of the enclosure with a hose. They will kill each other. If you keep a male and a female together full time, bad news bears. You're gonna wake up one day and she's not gonna have a tail. So there are no steadfast, they must be kept or can't be kept together for some species. And then there's other species that it's recommended. Things like monkey tail skinks do better in groups. Things like garter snakes often do better in groups. So it depends on the species. And this is another reason why I pound into your heads as I make these videos to do your research. Watching a video like this is not enough. If you are going to get red eye tree frogs, they're right beside me. So, you know, there's a video right here if you wanna watch about them. I keep a pair together. You can keep a pair together. They're not gonna beat each other up most of the time. I've done enough research, like so much research, and it works. I have leopard geckos together. I have, well, not anymore, but I used to keep leopard geckos together. I have crested geckos together. I have chihuahua geckos together. And things like dart frogs, depending on the species, do really well together as well. And I have those together. But again, that's the thing that's hard because Someone might say, oh, dart frogs always do well together when that's not always the case. There are certain species where males will become territorial, but you can have females together. Or there's certain species, tinctoria species, where females might get aggressive towards each other and you can actually have more males than females. So do your research before. But I promise this is the last time I'll say, do your research. I can't promise anything. Can't promise anything. All right, before we get to number one, today's video is not sponsored, but people ask me all the time, Adam, what's with the beady bracelets? 
I work with this really cool company called Follow. Basically, if you want to buy a bracelet, they also send you a card, kind of like a postcard with a QR code on it. And you can actually track a sea turtle or a shark or polar bear. And anyway, mine's name is Sandy and she's in Fort Myers, Florida right now. I'm so jealous. It was 40 degrees today and it felt like summer. Like, do you know how, can't, Canada, why do you be like this? So anyway, just wanted to answer the question because people ask all the time, Pikachu doesn't, you can't buy Pikachu on there, but you can buy these cool bracelets. Anyway, let's go to number one. So bro, I have this friend who has this Python and every night she sleeps with the Python and the Python curls up beside her. But what she doesn't know is the Python is actually just sizing her up to see if he can fit her in her belly so that the Python can eat her. Really? That is the coolest thing ever. I did not know that. Thank you for letting me know. The way that people say this with such amazing confidence that they believe it, and it is so ridiculous. And here's why it's ridiculous. Although I've seen this like literally highly produced videos that, you know, these stupid clickbait channels or Facebook groups where all they care about is getting clicks and they don't fact check anything. Well, no one actually fact checks anything on Facebook, but anyway, moving on. The reason it's ridiculous is because pythons, for the most part, depending on species, of course, are opportunistic feeders. Like there's no caw from the jungle book that's just like, hey, Mowgli, let's be friends. So I get like, that's not how they work. They lay there, they wait and ambush. And if something goes by, that's it. That is the end of whatever that animal's life is or they get away. There is no cat and mouse game. They're not playing games. They're not befriending them. They're not playing go fish on Sundays every other week while the snake is, hmm, what you don't know is next Sunday. Like uh, the first full moon of the month is when I plan to eat you. Like that's not how it works. They're not going to size you up. Sure, they might make mistakes and bite off more than they can chew or try to take down an animal that is too small for them and need another animal to sustain them but they're opportunistic. When something comes by, they pounce. Not like a cat, but like, you know what I mean? So no, your python is not sizing you up to feed on you. It's not like, it is the most ridiculous thing that I cannot believe people think is true. But again, people will believe basically anything on the internet. And I have seen so many of these silly videos depicting this. So there you go. Those are the top five most ridiculous myths. I could make part two, three, four. Let me know in the comment section below. I would love to do another one. Hit the like button. That's how I know that you like it. If the video does well, I do a part two, generally how it works. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching and hit that subscribe button. Helps so much. We are doing a reptile room pretty soon too. Do you like how Diamond's in this reptile room now and he's got a cool, anyway, his light isn't always red. It just looks good in the video. And a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. For as little as $1 a month, you can be part of the Patreon club. You can get discounts on the merch. You can see videos early. You get extra behind the scenes stuff, all sorts of stuff. And it really helps make videos like this one, Costa Rica trips. And we got some like, I'm gonna be announcing on Patreon the crazy international trip that we're doing two of them actually at the end of the year. Anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of that club and uh, practice my penmanship with the tale of Pikachu. Okay, I'll see you next week. See you next week.